So, good morning everyone. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that we just faced, but now everything should be fixed. So, welcome to KUHA webinar about assistive mouse comparison. My name is Jussi Kujanpää and I'm the as, uh, managing director of KUHA company. This presentation is following the classification presented by Dr. Heidi Köster from University of Michigan. The information in this presentation is collected from her blog and completed with manufacturer's web pages. During the presentation, if you have any questions or comments, please send those to the YouTube live chat or by email to webinar at kuha.com. So there are six families of assistive mice in Dr. Kerster's classification. The so first one being lip or chin joysticks, then wearable sensors, wearable target trackers, face trackers, eye trackers, and speech recognition mice. So lip or chin joysticks are mice that are controlled with chin or lips. So pros of these devices are that they are plug and play devices. They are compatible with all operating systems. They are wearable free, meaning that the user uh, do does not need to wear any uh, parts of the mice to be used. And also they have built in click, so the user can usually zip or puff to the mouthpiece of the mice to make a click. Uh, cons of these mice are that they require a mount where the uh, joystick is uh, in inserted. They can provide only moderate precision and they only can be operated next to the stand, next to the computer. Uh, examples of these mice are Integromouse Plus and Lipstick. Then wearable sensors. So they are user-worn sensors, typically controlled by head. Uh, pros of these devices that they do not require line of sight. They do not limit the user position. Uh, he or she can be located for how far from the computer as needed. Uh, they typically provide pixel perfect precision, which means that the user can do anything with these mice that he or she can do with any tabletop mouse. They also are immune to external conditions like light or noise. Uh, the con of these mice are that they require a worn sensor unit. Examples of these mice are Kuhazono, Kuhazono 2 and Class South. Uh, differences between these mice are analyzed later on this presentation. Then wearable target trackers. So they are user targets tracked by, an, by a camera. And typically the user target is very light. It's a, re, a refle reflecting dot. Uh, and But then cons of these mice that they require line of sight and the user must be positioned typically uh, 60 to 90 centimeters away from the camera. Um, they also are affected by lighting conditions. They do not work uh, in bright sunlight. Uh, typically, they can provide only moderate precision and they require camera mount and camera installation on top of the screen. This is especially problematic in the mobile devices. And examples of these mice are Head Mouse Nano and Tracker Pro 2. Then face, face trackers or face tracker mice. So they are actually a piece of computer software that uses the webcam, integrated webcam, to track the face or facial features of the user. So the pros of these mice are that they, uh, there are no user-worn parts. 
no additional hardware needed if the computer already have a webcam. Uh, but and also they have a built-in click support. For example, in Smile Mouse, the click is made by smiling. But the cons of these mice that they require line of sight, fixed user position. They require moderate lighting. So, for example, in a dark conditions, the webcam cannot recognize the face of the user. And they only can provide low precision. But examples of these mice are CSAM Enable and Smile Mouse. Then eye trackers. So they are um, mice that track the eye gaze of the users by a sensor unit which is located either below the computer screen or on the top of the screen. Uh, pros of these devices are that they are suitable for persons who have only the eye movements left. But on the other hand, if the user have, has any other movements possible, for example, uh, head movements, so there are some better options for the user due to the cons of the eye trackers that should be considered first. Uh, but other pros is that they have a built-in click support and there are no user-worn parts needed. But cons that they require frequent recalibration, uh, they only can provide low precision and that's why they are usually used with a tiled user interface like Grid 3. Uh, they are sensitive to lighting conditions and using eye gaze is usually exhausting for many users. And typically they are only for Windows PCs. I know that some uh, latest models of iRespond or Skyle also work with other operating systems, but most of the uh, eye trackers are only for Windows. And examples of these mice are Toby PCI5 and iRespond. And then uh, speech recognition mice. So uh, in this presentation and in this classification, speech recognition means that the, there are spoken commands that move and click the uh, mouse cursor. So pro of these mice are that there are no line of sight or variable required, but cons that these mice can only provide very low precision. They are sensitive to acoustic conditions and also they face privacy issues. For example, if you want to dictate a, an email to your friend in a crowded office, so that there are some clear problems with that setup. Uh, examples of these systems are Dragon, Windows Speech Recognition, and Mac OS Voice Control. Uh, uh, then, a comparison of wearable sensor mice. So, in this comparison, we have included four mice. So, Guhasono 2, Guhasono, Glasshouse version 1.3, and Inpartia. I know that there is also a fifth option available, which is the uh, Gyroset Vigo from Nautech. But as the Gyroset Vigo is uh, targeted to be used as a wheelchair control system and the computer access is only an additional feature on it, so we have not included it in the comparison. So there are actually two types of um, wearable sensor mice on the market. There are gyroscope mice, which are Kuhasono, Kuhasono 2, and Glasshouse. And then there is an accelerometer-based mouse, like in Patia. So the drawback of accelerometer-based mouse is that uh, they only recognize a tilt movement. So to move the mouse on the screen, you have to tilt your head. Uh, and due to this, so it only can provide 
moderate precision because for example rotating your head is not recognized as a mouse movement but then uh, all gyroscope based mice Kuhazono 2, Kuhazono and Glasshouse can provide pixel perfect precision. Uh, then wearing options. So Kuhazono and Kuhazono 2 actually provide six different wearing options. Uh, they have headband, head mount kit with neckband, uh, eyewear kit, uh, light eyeglass clip, universal clip and a baseball cap. Glasshouse has only the eyeglass frame type uh, wearing option, which is actually problematic for many eyeglass users because the bulky um, frame is blocking the area where the eyeglasses should be located. Uh, and Inpatia has only the Vel Velcro strap option available. Then Kuhazono and Inpatia. Uh, have two switch inputs, left and right, where Glasshouse has only the left click input. Uh, Kuhasano 2 has actually four programmable switch inputs. So you, the user can select whether those switch inputs are the left and right clicks, which is the default, but they also can be, for example, pause the cursor, scroll, center, double click, etc. Then gesture activated functions. So gestured, gestures are uh, predefined motion patterns that activate a certain mouse functions. Uh, Kuhasono 2 is the only mouse on the market that has these uh, gesture activated functions available. And these functions in Kuhasono 2 are pause, scroll and centering. Then Dwell software. In Patia has basic Dwell software included, which has uh, left, right and double click, drag and keep on-screen keyboard. Where Kuhasono 2 has uh, license to Kuha Dwell included. Kuha Dwell is a complete Dwell software that actually provides a full computer access. For Kuhasono and Glasshouse, there are no license for the 12 software included, but um, you can install any uh, available 12 software on those, and you can, for example, purchase a license for Kuha 12, which is also available separately. Then setting up. So in Partia requires a driver installation because it's not an HID standard mouse and also a calibration before it is used. Uh, Glasshouse re uh, requires Bluetooth pairing and according to the user manual, a three minute calibration process is required before the use of the mouse. Uh, then Kuhasono and Kuhasono 2, these are full 100% plug and play devices. You only plug in the USB receiver and turn on the uh, Kuhasono sensor unit, and then it's ready to be used. Then um, country of origin. So Kuhasono 2 and Kuhasono, as well as Inpatia, are, co are coming from European Union. Inpatia is from Spain, and Kuhasono and Kuhasono 2 from Finland. Where Glasshouse is actually Oh, coming from China. It is, it is a Chinese company. And then so we are now at the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. But now if you have any questions, so please send, uh, send those via the YouTube live chat or by email to webinar at kuha.com. So do we have any questions? Yeah, we do. So we have a couple of questions here. The first one is, is there a way to determine what would be a suitable assistive mouse for somebody? Yes, actually. So the question was how to actually determine the suitable assistive mouse for somebody. So after the presentation, uh, we will send the 
extended version of these my slides to everybody who who have registered and these slides include also the link to dr Kuster's a very comprehensive guide how to select the correct the correct assistive mouse for the user so i think uh, with with the help of these two sources you should be able to select the correct mouse do we have any other questions yeah there is another question hi what is the most accurate mouse for gaming okay so when selecting a mouse for gaming of course the it starts like selecting any mouse so it starts with the needs of the user and the capabilities of the user so if the user can use a normal tabletop mouse so maybe a normal gaming mouse is then the best option but if the hand movements are not possible but the head movements are so personally i would select kuhasono 2 because as far as we know it is the most precise mouse uh, head mouse on the market at the moment and it also provides some uh, handy features like gestures or programmable switch inputs that are not available on any other mouse. Uh, do we have any other questions? Yep, there is a third one. Are all mice compatible with all devices? So the question was, are all mice compatible with all devices? So answer is uh, no. Uh, some mice, for example, uh, many uh, eye trackers, uh, only Windows PCs, uh, some uh, head mice, like uh, I mentioned the NSO Empathia, it's only for Windows PCs, as well as the SmartNav, only for Windows. But all the mice that are standard uh, USB HID mice, like Kuazono or Bluetooth standard HID mice like uh, Classos. So those should be uh, compatible with any device. Uh, any other questions? Uh, those are all the questions I can see now from email and YouTube live chat. Thank you. Okay, in that case, thank you everybody for participating this presentation. After the presentation, we will send you a link to this presentation as well as the extended material, including link to Dr. Kuster's presentation. Thank you.